Hello and welcome to my channel Crafting with Shutter Monkey. I'm Amanda, also known as Shutter Monkey, and I live in Ayrshire on the west coast of Scotland with my husband and my cat. Um, we are both new empty nesters. The last one left home back in June, so it is all very quiet and all very calm round about here. Today is the 11th of October and this is episode number 31. Now it's been about five weeks, just over a month since I last filmed an episode and so much has happened in that time. It almost feels like summer has passed since the last time I recorded an episode. It just feels like there's so much has happened. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll go back to the last episode and I'll work through everything chronologically and hopefully I won't miss anything. Any other places that you can find me online, I will put links below in the description box underneath this video. And if there's anything that I show you or talk about today, I will put that in the description box as well. Sometimes I don't link it, but that's only if I can't find it anywhere for sale. And sometimes it's an Amazon link. I'm not affiliated with Amazon, so I don't get any money for that. But if you're in a different part of the world and I'm showing you a quilting tool, sometimes it's just easier to see it on Amazon and then you can get the, the product code or whatever and find where to buy it yourself in your own, your own country. Let's get started. Today's episode is all knitting and acquisitions. Um, I have been crocheting a wee bit, but there's not much to show you and I've been doing no sewing. So I've been working on that. I've been working on trying to get that sorted out because... It's my room that's always a mess. I can't get in it to sew. So it's been getting a good clean out recently as well. Let's go right back to the beginning of September. And the last episode was a knit and natter. We had a wee chat, didn't we? And this is what I was working on. It's the West Yorkshire Spinners colourway for 2023. The Christmas colourway for 2023. And this is Nutcracker. And I'm not going to put this one on a sock blocker and you'll find out why shortly. <laughs> but I started knitting this while we were having a little chat last month and I just used my squish to what pattern. So I don't actually need a pattern anymore because it is my own recipe for knitting socks and I know how long I want to do the toe. I know how long the toe is. I know how long I need to do the foot. I know how to do my gusset increases. I can do my heel flap. And then after the heel flap, I joined it to work in the round and I went straight into just a little ribbed um, cuff. I didn't do any leg on it. It's just a wee shorty. But after casting off, I realised that it was quite short. It was quite small looking and I couldn't figure out why. And it was when I was about to cast on the second sock that I realised I did it in the wrong size of knitting pins. Now, even my husband noticed it was small. As I cast it off, he, he said to me, is that a sock for Harley? And I said, no, it's for me. And he's like, it's awfully small. It does, it looks quite small. So I'm not going to force it onto a sock blocker because it is a wee bit small. And I realised that I knitted it with 2.25mm um, needles. And for West Yorkshire Spinners yarn, I need to come up to a 25 and a half, And I didn't. So I knitted a second sock. Here is the second sock here. Okay. This one is the right size. And it is on... The, it's 2.5 millimetre needles I used for this one and it's come out more the size that I need for my foot it hasn't been blocked yet I'm not really sure what to do with it whether to rip this one out I'm going to hold them up together right? I'm going to take it back off of here and I'll show you but if I hold that one there and hold the other one at the back you can see there is a wee bit of difference in the length and if I hold them, if I put the toes together where the colours start to change and I flatten that one out, you can see there is a slight difference in the width as well. And that's just coming up one needle size. It's the exact same sock that I've knitted, the same number of rows, same number of stitches, but it has made a wee bit of a difference. The only change I made was this one's just vanilla. It's just a, a plain sock. It's all stock and stitch. Whereas this one, I put a wee bit of rib pattern into it. Um, it's knit six, purl two. And every second round you just knit. So you're only working knit six, purl two every second round. 
and you alternate between that and and it round. It's just it breaks it up a wee bit. I quite like doing that in my socks. I started off with a knit three at either end though, so I would even up. If you do knit six, purl two all the way along your instep stitches, it will be offset slightly. So I just level it up with starting with a knit three. Um, and after finishing this second stock, I was still a bit like, do you know what? I'm not really that keen in this yarn. I don't know what it is. Um, it just wasn't working for me. And I used this blue colour. It's the cobalt colourway. It's one of the new shades from West Yorkshire Spinners. And it's cobalt 1005. And that's what I used for the contrast on the heels, the toe and the wee pop on the cuff. And it wasn't until... I was kind of saying, oh, I'm not really sure if I like this sock. Hmm. After I finished the second one, and it was my husband that said to me, why did you do it with blue? You're not a blue person. And he was absolutely right. So the next time I was passing through Glasgow, I thought, I'm going to get myself some red jam and we'll see how that comes out. But before I did that, I started another pair of socks. So let's go into those. While I was still working in those ones with the blue heel toes and cuffs, um, there was a yarn festival in Scotland. It was the Scottish Yarn Festival and that took place on the, was it the 9th of September? It was just after I last recorded and it was in Perth and I went to it and it was wonderful. It's the first time that I've been to a yarn festival since before Covid. Since way before, way before Covid. It's been a long time since I've been at a yarn festival and it was really, really good. Now, some of the yarn dyers were actually sharing their colourways online, what they were going to bring to um, the yarn festival and I had my eye on a few of them. The main reason that I wanted to go to Perth was because Toft were going to be there and I wanted to go and see the Toft stand. I'm quite a big Toft fan. You wouldn't know it because how little I crochet these days, but I do actually really like Toft stuff. And they had a stand. It was the first time in a long time that they'd been to Scotland. Um, and I did take two of my makes. I took my Snow Queen doll. You've seen that one before, haven't you? Um, and I took Morag the Healing Coo. Took her with me. She's not actually made using Toft yarn. She was made using Drops. Drops Nepal on a 4mm hook. Um, and I did get to speak to the staff. It was really nice because I was there quite early. I was there for the doors opening just five minutes before the door opened. And I was within the first 100 people in the door. And it was really, really quiet. So the Toff stand was quiet as well. And I got to go over and speak to the two the two members of staff on the stall. It was um, Rachel and Tash. And I showed them my two makes. And I got a patch from each of them, which was lovely. Um, so I got... Rachel the Bedlington Terrier and also got Natasha the Two Toad Sloth. I don't actually have the, the Rachel patch. I gave it away. I'm a member of a couple of groups on Facebook, um, Toft groups, and I thought I don't collect the patches. I went to go see Toft um, and it was lovely to see them and speak to the staff, but I don't collect the patches. So I put one of them onto the Facebook selling group. Um, it was actually the Facebook, the regular page. I did see if anybody just wanted it. I wanted to rehome it. And I got told off by the moderators because I put it on the wrong group. It should have been the selling group. Um, but I wasn't selling it. I just wanted to rehome it. But it should still have been on the other group. So I haven't put the other one on because, well, I don't want to get told off again. Um... So that was one of the main reasons for going to Perth. I wanted to see Toft and it was it was it was really nice. And I wanted to see these um these uh, special colourways that were dyed for the event. So one of the colourways was this one. Now this one's already been caked up because I've knitted with it, okay? Um the other ones are still in their skeins. So this one is called Zombie Unicorn, and I just love that name. I love the colourway as well. And it is by Snuggly Stars Yarn. And it's a it's it's just lovely. I just I saw this one online and I thought I need to go see that yarn dyer. I need to get that yarn. Um she did actually have little mini skeins in a basket. It was just 10 gram minis, so I bought four of them 
because I thought that'll go, these will go quite nice with all the colours in there. And then, because if I be careful about what I'm doing, I'll get two pairs of socks. So I'll get a, sock, a pair for me and a pair for my daughter. I don't actually know what those little mini skeins are. They were just little, they were unlabeled. But the four of them looked the same and I just picked up four and I've got those wound up as well. But there's my sock. And it's finished. I just love it. It's just a shorty sock. It's it's not a full length sock. And I do have two. And I just love it. It's a shorty sock again. The same the same recipe. My squish toe up and I've i I've worked the knit six purl two every second row just to give me a wee bit of stitch detail on it. And but when I came to the leg, I actually worked 13 rounds of a leg on this one. So it's slightly longer than those blue ones. Let me just show you that blue one again. So it is slightly longer. You can see if I hold you won't see if I hold it up that way, will you? If you hold it up, you can see that one's slightly longer. Not be much, just 13 rows. And I love that colourway. So I'm really pleased with that. And I do have two and a half little mini skeins left because I haven't put much. It's just a wee pop of colour up along the top. And I've got plenty to knit another pair. So I need to get those cast on. It doesn't matter if they're done for Halloween. My, my daughter won't mind. She's... She's a bit like myself. She likes Halloween colourways all year long. So, um, but I will knit another pair for her because I think she she would like this colourway too. And she is very knit worthy. She wears her socks a lot. She actually wears them through. She does end up with holes in the soles and maybe the toes wearing through or maybe accidentally felts a, a pair or two in the wash. But um, she does actually get good use out of her socks. She gets better use out of your socks than I do, believe me. So that was my first acquisition at Perth. Actually, no, that was my second because I did buy something for the Toff stall. It was just little eyes for the dolls, the little safety eyes. That was all I bought when I went to the Toff stand because I buy so much for them online that I really didn't need anything when I saw them in person. Anyway, let me show you the other acquisitions. There was three colours that I was after. When I went to Perth, there was three special limited edition colourways. And this was the first one that I looked for. This is Ducky Darlings. I've never bought for Ducky Darlings before. And this one is called Perth's Darling. And it was a special colourway dyed for Perth. Um, now, I know that Ducky Darlings is doing a limited edition colourway for each of the shows that they attend this year. And there was one that they dyed for Yarndale. Now, I didn't go to Yarndale. Um, I'm really hoping I can go next year. I went to Yarndale back in 2012. So that was, what, 11 years ago? And that's the last time I was there. And I come home with a, sh a fleece for a sheep. Well, it wasn't for the sheep. It was from the sheep, I should say. Anyway, that's the Yarndale colourway. Karen from Stitches and Jack had showed this online. She bought it when she was at Yarndale. And I thought, that's lovely. And I did go online, she had some left, and I bought it. So that's me now. Get two skeins of Ducky Darlings, and I think they look quite nice together, actually. Quite like them. So that was one of my yarny purchases. And the second one that I found was from The Wool Chemist. And this one is Perth 23, it's called. And I just love those colours. Um, just those greens and the purples. It's, it's I like heathery colours. Greens, purples and pinks. And those shades are just lovely. This is only a 50 gram sock set, this one. I didn't think this one had nylon, but it does. It does. So I'll only get one pair of socks out of that because it's just a wee 20 gram mini and the 50 gram skein. And then, what else did I get? Oh, that's Snuggly Stars. Um, the last colourway that I got, it's not really my colours. I'm not going to lie, um, but I really love it. It is by Ammo Yam, and I think they are Scottish. I think they're a Scottish yarn dyer over in the East Coast. I don't see anything on it that tells you. Um, and this one is called the Scottish Yarn Festival 2023. It's not my colours. Um, I'll probably knit something for my daughter or my husband with this yarn, but it reminded me of this. 
I love that painting. Starry Night by Van Gogh. Is it Van Gogh or is it Van Gogh? I'm not quite sure how you pronounce his name. And that's why I bought it. Although it's not my colours, it reminded me of something that I'm really, really fond of. The final yarn they purchased that I made at Perth was these two mini skeins. Um, they are from the Fiber, the Fiber Punk. The reason that I bought these ones is I've been looking for a couple of really vibrant mini skeins to knit some more mini mini socks, a eh, shorty socks, I should say. I knitted these ones a couple of years ago for myself. I haven't even worn these yet. I don't think I've even taken a photograph of them. This yarn was from Down Sheepy Lane. And it's got lots of neon colours, pops of neon colour through. And I bought the pink one for myself. And I remember way back when I started recording these episodes, I asked if anybody had the other colours. And I've never heard anything back to swap. So I thought, I really need a couple of bright neon pops so I can finish this yarn off because I've got plenty of it left. Um, So I got the orange one because there's some orange in there. And I thought that would be quite nice for my daughter-in-law. And then I got the, the green and I thought a green one would be nice and I could try and get another pair of socks for my daughter. Just shorty socks like this and I should be able to get the um, the other two pairs from what I've got left. So, I have been looking for mini skeins for a while. Never seen any in person because there's not many yarn shops round about here um, that sell mini skeins. But I really liked those when I saw them and I thought they'll, they'll be quite nice on those socks. There was only one other thing that I bought while I was at Perth and it was a couple of patterns. It was these patterns here. It was the Aberdeen hat and the Stirling hat. And these are by Wee County Yarns. Now, I've already got a couple of these patterns. Um, I've already got three of these. I've got the Ayrshire one. I've got the Glasgow one and the Edinburgh one and I wanted to add Stirling to my collection as well. These are three areas in Scotland that are they're quite special to me. Um, I was born in Edinburgh. Well, no, I wasn't born in Edinburgh. I was born just outside Edinburgh and I lived there for the first two years of my life. I, I've grown up in Ayrshire, so obviously I've got the Ayrshire one as well now. Lived in Ayrshire most of my life. And then all my family come from Glasgow. So I wanted the Glasgow one. And Glasgow's the closest city to where I live. It's only about 25 miles away. It's not long in the train or in the car. And Stirling. Um, Stirling is where we spent the day when we get married. That was all I bought when I went to Perth. I was only there for an hour. I was in and out really quick. About an hour and a half. And it was, I had a wonderful time. It was great. I went to the Toft stall first. I spoke to the girls from Toft. And then I did a circuit of the room. And then I did a circuit going back the other way to make sure I hadn't missed anything. And that's when I started buying the, the show colours. And then after that, um, I did a third circuit back the way I went the first time. And that's when I found the other wee, just a couple of wee bits and bobs, like the, the neon coloured yarn. And I found the ammo yarn. But one other thing that I saw while I was there was they had a, they had a wee stand that had yarn dyers that couldn't make it on the day and they had a selection of yarns from different yarn dyers and one of the ones that I saw was a company called Knit Me Sane now I hope you can see that because this we label Skinkles it's sparkly the writing glitters and it was just lovely I know a sparkly label and that's what draws my eye to a yarn but it was a pale pink colour way they had. And I didn't buy it. I thought, Do you know what? You've got enough. You don't need more pale pink yarn. You've got enough at home. Um, and I left, but I kept thinking about it. And I kept thinking about the labels. And I kept thinking about the company. And I'd never heard of them before. And it turns out that they're actually a Scottish-based company. A Scottish-based yarn dyeing company. And I'd never heard of them. But unfortunately, they've gone out of business now. Not, not out of business. They've stopped dyeing. Sorry. And... You can't get their yarn anymore. So what was that Scottish Yarn Festival? I think was the last stock that they had. And it's not available online. But I did find this one. One of the colourways. When I looked through their, their Instagram feed. One of the colourways that I really liked. Was this one here. And it's called um, A Nightmare Before Valentine's. I like the colour. I love the name. Love the sparkly label. Um, so I did find a skinny that in a D-stash. And 
It's such a shame because they had so many different pretty colourways. I wish I'd found them before. You feel like you're missing out, don't you now? But that'll be great for my daughter. She'll like that. Her, um, she likes A Nightmare Before Christmas and her cat's called Sally. So her, cat, her cat's called Sally after her favourite Disney princess. So I did find that one after I got back home, but it was um, the yarn festival that inspired me to buy it. There is another yarn festival in Scotland on the 21st and 22nd of October, I think it is. It's Glasgow School of Yarn. So I wasn't going to go to it because I think I've got enough yarn, but it's not. sometimes it's, it's not about the yarn buying. Sometimes it's about going there and just soaking up the atmosphere. And having a wander about and getting a bit of inspiration, even from patterns and different stuff on the wall. Who am I kidding? If you go, you're going to buy something, aren't you? Maybe I just shouldn't go. Anyway, let's get back onto the knitting rather than the acquisitions. Oh, no, one final acquisition. Let me show you this. It's not much to look at, right? It is my Halloween box from Beehive Yarns. Totally forgot her name there. Um... But they're all in here. This is my Halloween countdown box. And I'm not going to tip it over too far because all the wee skeins are in there. They came in just a plain black box, a plain box with a black lining inside it. But I've put them into this wee Halloween bucket that I found in B&M. Um, but they're all in there. And I'm going to start opening them next Wednesday. I think that's right. Next Wednesday is two weeks until Halloween. There's 13 mini skeins in here. And then there's one full skein. I'll open the full skein in Halloween. And then 13 days before I'll open the mini ones. I've not even peeked at any of it. I, I can't believe how well behaved I've been. Sometimes I peek at things and I can't help myself. But there's a few little other things in here. There's a little... Oh, I didn't say that. It's a, it's a Wednesday. You know, Wednesday the... Wednesday Adams on Netflix. It's um, based on her. It's based on that programme. So there's a wee badge. There's a candle. And a lo that lollipop goes really nice with the stripe up there, doesn't it? And, oh, uh, there's something. <laughs> I hope that's no breakable in there. There is something in this wee package. It feels really light. Maybe it's a wee stitch marker or something. But I haven't, I haven't peeked yet. And a couple of stickers. We've got a couple of stickers in here too. The window. I'm going to actually have to watch it again, aren't I, as I'm opening this. But I'm really looking forward to opening that. And as I say, I've just put it in my little Halloween bucket. And I'll get to that very, very soon. Um, right, back to those socks. Those nutcracker socks. Let's get back to those. So we had the blue ones. And I went out and I bought the new red colourway from West Yorkshire Spinners. Because I thought, do you know what? I think my husband's right. It's because it's got blue heel toes and cuffs. So a week after the Scottish Yarn Festival, I was going back to Perth because I was helping out at a two-day conference. And I thought, I can jump into John Lewis on my way through Glasgow and get the red colourway that I need. So I did that. Um, it was an event for the SWI and I was in the room helping out, just, just looking, for, looking after the handcrafts, setting up the handcraft competition. There was 53 teams that had entered... We actually had a preview of this crafting competition when we were in Lanarkshire uh, back in July. That was a three-day event as well and the judging took place then. So this was the, the, the competition back on display to the public again and the winners and every, all the prize winners were announced. So I thought, I'm going to be there for three days. I'm stewarding in this craft room. I've got plenty of time to knit socks. And I did, I actually knitted one of my Halloween colourways, the Zombie Unicorn, and I also get one of these, I get the footy one of these done. And I like this much better. There's still a wee bit of yarn there. That was because I didn't have a stitch marker. And see when I got to the end, where I needed to place a marker. Just to mark where you start toes, end gusset increases, whatever. I sometimes just like to place wee markers before I block them. So that's what that wee strander yarn is. I didn't have a stitch marker, so I put a bit of yarn in. But on this one, rather than just going from... The heel flap and into the cuff. I liked on my Halloween ones that I'd done a, just 13 rows of the leg. So what I did on the red one was I just did a colour repeat. So you've got the four different colours with the, the black and white in the middle. And I just did the colour repeat and the pattern. And then I did a colour repeat in the rib. And just a tiny wee pop of colour at the end. And I think I'm happier with those ones. 
I think I prefer the red to the the blue. What do you prefer? But we're all different, aren't we? So I've got the second one started. I have got the second one here. And they're on the right size needles. They're on the 2.5s. I got it right this time. And I don't actually have much to do on these. Um, I got that done when I was at Perth. No, it was that one I did at Perth. I got that one done when I get back from Perth. The, the, the weekend being away. Um, and I stopped when I finished the heel flap. Because I hadn't tried that one on. I hadn't tried it on and I wanted to make sure I was happy with the length on my foot. So that one kind of stalled. And that's what happens when me I stall with things and then they get put away and you forget all about them. And the next thing you know, you've got how many whips? So now that I've showed it to you, I really need to get it finished, don't I? But just in case you are wondering, that's the new red colourway from West Yorkshire Spinners. Now they've also got another two colourways that match their Christmas collections as well. Now this one is rouge and it's num the colourway is 1000. It's Rouge 1000. This is one of the previous ones. It's Cherry Drop. And that's 529. I'm just showing you them all together so you can see the difference in the, the reds. And this one is called... This one is Cayenne Pepper and it's 510. So if I pop them all together like that, you can maybe see it better like that. There is a slight difference in them and they do match depending on what Christmas colourway you buy there are different reds. But it's you can see them online but sometimes it's difficult when you don't see them all together. You can't see the changes in them, can you? So there you go. That's the all the three reds together from West Yorkshire Spinners. Right. I've got one more pair of socks to show you and then we're going to move on to something a wee bit more exciting, okay? Now this is a pair of socks that I just finished on Monday. This is Wednesday. I've st they're actually still slightly damp. They've been blocking. Um, and these are for my husband. Now, I started these socks back in... It was before 2021. They were lying in my living room drawer. And I know it was before 2021 because I changed my living room furniture in October 2021. So I know it was before then I started them because they were in the white drawer and I don't have white furniture in my living room anymore. Um, and I showed these in my whip parade, my knitting whip parade in March this year. And I think I was up to there in one of the socks. See that wee white stripe here? I was up to there and I'd popped it away. So after doing the whip parade, I thought, come on, six ply socks. They knit up really quickly. And I did the second sock. And I know in my following episode, after doing that whip parade, I did show it in that video. And funnily enough, I'd managed to get the second sock up to the white area. And the two socks were in, are at practically the same point and all they needed was finished. Well, I finished that second one that I was knitting. This one was sitting in stitch holders. I put the, 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 the DPNs back in, ready to finish it and sat it away again. I had 16 rows to do, 16 rounds to do, and that's it. The socks were done, and he's badly needing socks. So he's away working this week. See, when he comes home, I can give him a pair of socks and say, welcome home. <laughs> he's actually wading through all these socks because he gets a knit socks for me and a knit socks for my daughter. And sometimes I knit socks for me and I don't like them, so I give them to my daughter. But I don't knit a lot of socks for my husband. Um... And it's a shame because a lot of these socks are worn through. Again, they're worn through in, through in the soles or they've got holes in the toes. Mostly in the soles, he's worn the soles through. And the wee sole does need new socks. So he'll be delighted with these. Um, and they've just lay for how long? But they're done now. So you've seen these in two previous videos and they're finally done. I really need to actually get my whip lists out. Um, my whip, look at my own whip videos and make a proper list. Because some of the whips I threw out, I bend them, I frog them and I get rid of the yarn. If the yarn wasn't usable, I bend it. But if it was usable, I've charity shopped it. There's a couple that I've done that with. And there's also a couple of things that I've finished and I haven't updated my whip lists because I need to I need to get through some of my whips. The problem that I have with some of my whips, and the reason that I've got so many, I'm always making excuses, aren't I? Um is that some of the garments won't fit me. 
my body shape has changed so much in the last five years. The late 40s, you change so much, don't you? Um, and I don't think they'll fit me. I've put on a bit of weight, I've expanded round the middle a wee bit and I just don't think things will fit me. So the whips that I've got that are garments, I'm like, I don't think that's going to fit me. If I rip it out and start it again, I still don't think I've got, I don't think I'll be able to do it because I don't think I've got enough yarn. Um, so the options are either try and lose a bit of weight and fit into it, finish it and fit into it, or just finish it. It's not going to fit you, but give it away. So that's what I need to do with them probably because most of them won't fit me. Now, see my crochet cardigan? You can maybe just see it and not, maybe not, you can, maybe can't see it. The grey one that I've been using, the advent calendar from Vicky Brown's Designs, it's the Granny Square crochet. I measured for that. I was very careful to make sure that it fit and it fits me around the bust. I didn't measure around my tummy. Do you know, like the, just on your hips, that widest part of your tummy, I didn't measure around there. I assumed my bust was the widest part because it usually it used to be. But <laughs> around the middle has taken over a little bit and I actually got to this got to the stage where the buttons are ready to be sewn on and I tried it on and I'm like I can get it fastened it looks really nice and then I moved my hands down the button band and I thought I don't think I'm going to get that fastened around my tummy so that's why that's kind of been put in a back burner as well right now because although I love working on it is it going to fit me I've actually got another acquisitions to show you and I I very quickly moved on to finish showing you the socks and I forgot to show you the final things that I bought in Perth um, when I was at conference. The second time I was at Perth, not the first time I was at Perth. I've showed you all the yarn acquisitions, but when we were at conference, it was a two-day conference and the first day was inspirational speakers. It was a women supporting women conference and the first day was inspirational speakers and they were all really good. Day two was... Um, the more, the well-kent faces, the celebrities, and two of them in particular were really, really good. I was looking forward to seeing them. The first one was Jen Hogg from, she was on the Sewing Bee. She was in season five of the Sewing Bee, and you'll know who I, you'll probably know who I mean the minute I mention her name. But she was there giving us a talk, and, and she was really, really good. She's lovely, she's so down to earth. She was telling us about her inventions, um, some of the things that she's, the ideas that she's come up with and she's put into, she's actually made tools for knitting and for for, for sewing. Um, and she said she had a new one that she was releasing this year. And she did a Q&A at the end and I was really dying to ask her, what's your new invention for this year? I want to know what's your knitting tool, what's your, is, it a, is it a knitting tool or a sewing tool? And I thought, I'm not asking, she'll no tell us in front of a room full of 300 people, will she? So I waited until the break and during the break she had a little pop-up shop and I actually, I went out and had a wee chance to speak to her out there and she was selling some of her, her knitting tools and her sewing tools. So if you do see her at an event, just because she was on the sewing bee doesn't mean it's only sewing stuff that she sells she actually does have knitting tools too. And she told me all about the, the new tool, but that's already been in social media because she told me about this back on the, the 16th of September. And you've all probably seen it on on um, our Instagram page. But it's a wee, it's it's a it's a guide for helping you keep keep a place on your knitting charts. She's actually going to be in Glasgow at Glasgow School of Yarn on the 21st and 22nd. Um so I'm hoping if I do go to Glasgow School of Yarn, I'm hoping I can buy one of our buy one of our new our new knitting tools to help keep placing my charts when I'm knitting. It'd be quite handy. One of the things that I did buy from her was this. Or maybe I should just hold up the wee tin see if you can see in it. But it's seam guides. It's if you're adding seams to things, and they're all different sizes in here, and they just help you mark seams for when you're sewing. More so, I think, for dressmaking, but it'll come in handy for so many things. Just little wooden circles, and it helps you mark your seam allowances. So I did get those, and the other thing that I bought was a, a gauge, a swatch, for doing, measuring your swatches. I didn't need another gauge swatch. I just like this one because it's wooden, and it's also got all the needle sizes drilled in, so you can check your needle sizes. I haven't used it yet um, because I kept it here to show it to you 
but now that it's now that I've shown it off, I can pop it in my knitting bag. I'll pop a wee link to our Etsy shop below if it's something that you're interested in, and especially because I think Etsy's doing a special offer just now, aren't they? You get money off if you spend a certain amount. But the final thing I got at conference was this book, The Hebridean Baker. He was lovely. He was very, very entertaining. He's a good public speaker. Um, I don't know much about the Hebridean Baker. I don't follow him. On, well, I didn't follow him online. I knew he was coming to conference, and and I thought, oh, this will it'll be entertaining. And he was very entertaining. And I did wait in the queue at the end of his talk to buy his book, and he also signed it as well, which was really, really good. So there we go. And there's even a wee paw print from his dog. Is it Seamus? Shoris. Shoris. I think his dog's called Shoris. But is it Cognac McLeod? I think his name is. I think that's how he pronounce his first name, Cognac. Um, it's Gaelic. And unfortunately, although I'm Scottish, I don't speak Gaelic. Not everybody in Scotland speaks Gaelic. Um, but there's some really lovely recipes in here. I've not tried any of them yet, but I have been eyeing quite a few up. I do like a cookbook, even though I don't cook very often. My husband does it all. But it was just quite really nice. He was telling us the story of how we get famous as well. Like He was just posting pictures, posting his recipes online. And then somebody from Elle magazine mentioned him. And all of a sudden, overnight, it was just like, wow. He was a, an internet sensation worldwide. He was known all over the place. So he is actually coming to Glasgow as well. This is his second book and he has uh, The Hebridean Baker at home. I think it's it's either just out, just been released or it's just about to be released. He is coming to Glasgow on the 21st of October to do a book signing for his third book and I might actually go and try and see him. Funnily enough, it's the same weekend that Glasgow School of Yarn is on. And he's going to be in the West End. I think it's Waterstones. He's going to be there signing his books. Um, so it's the same day that Jen is going to be at Glasgow School of Yarn. He's going to be in Glasgow as well. I just think that's what a coincidence, eh? Because the two of them, I saw the two of them in Perth in the one day. And I'm going to see the two of them maybe in Glasgow in the same day. I have got three garments to show you now. And one of them is a baby knit. Now, I told you I was going to knit this before. And here it is. All finished. I'm really... I really, really love this wee cardigan. This was for the Evelyn Baxter competition. Now, remember last year I was going about teaching knitting classes all over Scotland. This was the wee cardigan that they all knitted for the competition. If you came to the class, you could enter the competition and all the cardigans were at display at conference in Perth and I had to judge them. So before I did the judging, I actually had to knit the little cardigan myself. I did say before that I was going to be knitting this wee cardigan and do you know what? I nearly didn't sew it up. I had to knit it to make sure I knew all the wee bits, all the wee areas to look for when I did the judging. Um, I had the back done, I got the two fronts done, I grafted the shoulder seams together and then I picked up the stitches and I did the button band and then I knitted the sleeves. But I hadn't sewn the sleeves onto the body and then just see that wee seam up here on both sides, that's all I had to do and I nearly didn't finish it because I thought it's not going to fit Amara, it's not going to fit my granddaughter, it's too small for her. She is five months old now and she's into age nine to twelve months clothes, she is, she is so big, she is so happy, she's such a contented baby, so she is, she's such a wee gem but this won't fit her and I, th I thought Oh, what's the point in finishing it? It's no good. But then I don't like just throwing things into the bin because they just go to landfill, don't they? And I was in a charity shop last week. I was actually looking for maybe a baby bouncer or an activity table. Something that Amara can sit in when she comes round for a wee visit. Because her older brother, one of her older brothers, the four-year-old, is just so full of beans. He's hyper. He is full of energy. And he just runs about constantly. He's always on the go. And I'm kind of... Well, her mum's what her mum had said as well. It's kind of concerning when she's lying on the floor, rolling around and getting to move about. And just... It's because her big brother is just all over the place all the time. So just hyper. He really is. Especially when it comes to grannies, because he loves coming to grannies. Um, and I thought, I'm going to go look for a wee... I'm going to go look for something that she can sit in. 
and I was in a charity shop that's quite near to the gym that I go to and um, I didn't find anything for Amara to sit in but they had a pile of baby cardigans along one wall all on display put up in the wall and they were looking for £10 for them. Now some of them were lovely, some of them were really, they looked like they were brand new, they'd just been knitted and handed in but other ones looked a wee bit washed and worn and a bit, they were sagging a wee bit and they had bobbles and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I will just finish this wee cardigan after all and hand it into the charity shop because <laughs> if they can get £10 for it that's quite good isn't it? So I really love it. I actually bought two balls of this wool. It is James C. Brett Baby Twinkle and this colourway is called... I don't know, it just says BT02. It doesn't have a colour name on it. Um, I only used three quarters of a ball and I bought two balls. So I do love this wee cardigan. I think it's so pretty. I love that wee pattern, the texture in the bottom and then just the wee stocking stitch with the eyelets at the top. I just think it's lovely. Um, so I'm actually wondering whether I could knit a bigger size because I've got a, a full ball and a quarter of the other ball. So I could maybe do another one and do it in a size that would fit Amara because I think it's lovely. It's that pattern here. It's the Wondersoft DK and it's 8177. I have just been and swapped over the stuff on my table so I can show you my garments. Now the first garment I have to show you, I've cast on two. I know, I've no business casting on new things, all the whips that I've got, but I did, so. Right, the first one is the Lace and Fade Boxy by Hohi Locatelli. And I did show you this before, and I showed you the yarn that I was going to use for it. Well, I got it cast on. Right, it's actually on quite short needles, but I'll hold it up the best I can, and I'll... See if I can show you. I did take a wee photograph of it before I joined it under the arms. So maybe if it doesn't look too good, I could try and put a photo in. But that's it here. I'm absolutely loving working on this. Um, I just love it. Now the two skeins that I had, th this main colour, I had two skeins of it. And it is Madeleine Tosh and it's Tosh Merino Light. Now my gauge swatch was ever so slightly off. I had, a, I had some, some more stitches. I think I had a few more stitches in it. But I did have a garment in mind that I like wearing. And it fits me. Through, around all bits of the body. Um, and I used that as a guide. So I measured that and I took the measurement of it. It is a boxy top. So it is baggy around, around, around the stomach area as well. Um, and I measured that. Took all the measurements off of that. Got my swatch. Knew my gauge was a wee bit off, but then picked a size um, that was slightly bigger than what I needed. I don't want it as big and baggy as I think some of them are if you look through the projects in Ravelry, but I do want it baggy. So I've picked the fourth size and the fourth size will actually come out a wee bit smaller because my gauge was off, but that's fine with me. I think there is only five lace repeats in the original version. I'm going to put an extra lace repeat in and then probably a wee bit extra length on the on the main colour as well. Um, I have alternated my skeins and it's not helicone in or anything fancy like that. This top bit here, I've used skein one and this bit here, I'm using skein two. And then I've gone back down here to skein one. I'm just going to alternate using them and then that way because my two skeins were slightly different. Although they were both the same yarn, the same brand, and they were the same colour, they were slightly different, it won't matter on this. And I see just holding this up in front of the camera, it's like, oh, I've got all the heart eyes right now. I do love it. Um, it is, I just, it's... And I was, I was doing great with it, getting on with it really well and working away on it. And then I had an idea to cast on something else. And this is kind of sat in the back burner, but I will get back to it. I've got one of my wee stitch markers on here. I hope you can see that okay. It's um, from Bobbles and Berries. She's based in Edinburgh and she it's embroidered. She broid embroiders these wee stitch markers. So that's a wee pumpkin I've got on this one. I just love it. Um, I ordered that on my birthday. I was in York and I knew this update was going live and I think it was midday on the Sunday, on the day of my birthday. 
and we were wondering, we'd just come off the walls and I'm like, I was on my phone and my husband's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm pre-ordering some stitch markers. <laughs> I've got to do it. I've got to do it today before they sell out. <laughs> so that was one of them, the wee pumpkin. But I'm really, really enjoying working on that. My only concern with this is that I don't know if I'm going to have enough yarn for the sleeves. Um, I think to do the... Sorry, hold on. One, two, it's four repeats of the lace. I'm going to put five in to get... Because I need it a wee bit longer. Um, I'm five foot ten, so I'm quite tall. And I normally find that whenever I knit garments, I have to add a bit of length onto the body because I'm tall. Um... So that's fine. But if I do run out of yarn, I'm going to get the body to the right length. And if I run out of yarn before I go into the sleeves, I'm hoping I'll maybe have about 10 grams from each skein left over. And if even all I do is pick up round the armhole, just pick up enough and do a wee bit of rib, just to, just to neaten up the edge of the armhole, that's fine. I don't have to have a big long sleeve on it or anything like that. But if I do run out totally, I'm going to have to find another skein of yarn. So... If you see any Madeleine Tosh, Tosh Merino Light on your travels, when you're scouring about the internet in the colour wee ink, let me know because I might need to buy it. I'm not going to buy it until I know I'm closer to working on the sleeves because I might not need it. I also could maybe just do some mohair. I could do mohair sleeves and just a tiny wee ribbed cuff as well. I'm going to wait till nearer the time and then I'll work it out. This is the Madeleine Tosh. And the lace portion, I've been knitting that in Drops Kid Silk. That's what I'm using for that. And the colourway is number 28 for the Kid Silk. But I just, I just absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And I need to get it done. I'm already planning another one. I know I'm not even halfway through this one and I've cast on something else. But I've already, I'm already planning another one. Do you know all those sock skeins that you've got and you think, oh, they're really, really pretty. Do you really want to knit socks with them? And I thought you could do like a pastel rainbow and you could do the pink at the top and you could do, then you can do peach and then you could do a lemon and just do your six colours in different pastel shades. And I've got some cereal packer there. So I've already, I'm planning another one and I'm leaving halfway through this. I am using 3.5 millimetre needles. That's what the pattern recommended. Um, this one here that I'm knitting, that I'm using for knitting, is a Knit Pro Royale. I managed to break one of my needles. So on this, on the other side, it's just a regular Knit Pro needle that is um, just an interchangeable one. And I can't remember the collection that that's from, just the Knit Pro interchangeables, but it's still a 3.5 but I'm using this one for the knitting and that one's just for feeding it off because I'm working in the round. But I didn't want to go buy another set. I broke one and I didn't want to buy another set. But the problem is I then looked for another set and I can't get the three and a half millimetre anyway. So, but next time you see it, it'll, it'll have grown a wee bit. But, oh, it's just lovely. It's going to be nice and cosy, actually. Right, I'll pop this one away. Let's move on to the final thing I've got to show you today. And it is the Leaf Cardigan by the Crea Beer. I'm loving working on this. I bought this pattern the day it came out. It came out on the, the 1st of September. And I've been thinking about it ever since. Can I stop thinking about it? And I love the original one that's lots of colours in it. I love the booklet one. I love all the variations that people are doing where maybe one colour self-coloured and the other side is micro stripes. I love them all. Um, and I was thinking, can you knit this with an advent calendar? And I was counting the stripes that she had, the coloured stripes that she had get up the front and up the back. And there was only five colours. And I'm thinking... Well, I'm going to have, to have to add a wee bit of length onto that because I think I'm taller than Rebecca is and it would work great with an advent calendar, wouldn't it? So, as that was going on in my head, I then started to think what advent calendar would I use? And just as I was thinking about that, the postman delivered the final instalment from Beehive Yarns of the 2022 advent. It was last year's advent. Now, the way Beth did it was... You can buy advent calendars, obviously, in the lead up to Christmas, but a lot of the yarn dyers then let you, they do, they do another run of it in January. 
and you can pre-order them and you'll get them sometime in February or March. So if you've seen one at Christmas time and you really, really like it, you can then go buy the one that you really, really like in January or February. I did buy two last year. I bought the Advent, I bought the Advent from Castleview Yarns, which I've already knitted up. Feeling rather smug about that, actually. It's not just stuck in my stash. And I bought the, the, the Spectrum Fibres one as well. But as I was opening both of those, it was the Beehive Yarns one on social media that kept catching my eye. I just love everything that Beth does. Um, so I did think I'm going to order that in January. But the great thing that she did was it was a year at the cabin. So there was six spring, six summer, six autumn and then six winter colourways. And she actually split it up into the bundles of six. So you could order the spring colourway and we could order that in January. And then it was a couple of months later, she put up a pre-order for summer. And then a few months later, she put up the pre-order for autumn. And that was the winter one who's actually just arrived before I started my cardigan. It's when it came through the door, I thought this is going to be perfect for the Leith cardigan. Um, so I looked out the other three packs that I had and I ordered some yarn online. Now, I was going to order um, some of the, the Danish yarns that are circulating just now in everybody seems to love them and and then I thought I don't know what colour we I want I'm going to have to knit a, buy a couple I'm going to have to swatch with them and see just stick to what you know so I looked online for some rowing yarn um, and I found on Will Warehouse they had the rowing superwash DK down to £3 a ball now they had it was the cream I was after. I bought the cream. I bought ten balls of that. That is enough to do the Leith cardigan and mix it in with my advent calendar. And I've used this in the past, and I know I like it, so I just stuck with that. But while I was on, they also had they had a pink version, and they had a green and a blue. Now I was thinking I don't. I'm doing I'm going to do a cardigan soon for my husband, and I thought I wonder if the grey or the blue would suit him. He wasn't sure of the blue, which is just as well because it sold out a day later. And then he doesn't like the grey. He says it's too grungy, it's too sludgy looking. It's not a shade that he's keen on. So I've got these now. I'll use them up for something. And the pink, I was actually wondering whether to use the... I think I showed you in the last episode. It was Beehive Yarns again. It's turning into the Beehive Yarns show, isn't it? Um, and it was a... I bought it... It was a de-stash from somebody. It was the Grease the Summer Loving Box. And I thought, I wonder if that would go nice with the pink. And I could knit the Daft Days cardigan by the Korea Bear. That's not out yet. It's just in test knit. I was forward planning. But I don't I don't think I like the pink way. It's pinks and blues. And I don't think this is... Um, I think this is too bright in its own. I think it would compete too much with the pops of colour. So I think I need either a dark grey for that one. Or maybe even a black. So that'll be another project you'll see soon. I did apply to do the test knit, but I didn't get accepted. Anyway, so the, I didn't get accepted for our test knit in the very same day I cast on our Leith cardigan, so it's not, not too bad. So let me just show you the back piece, okay? I'm just loving this. Now I've got a wee question to ask you here, right? I've left this on, I knitted it on on a, a longer needle, on a circular needle, but I've popped them onto four millimetres. It's four millimetre circular needles I used as the pattern I asked for. And I have popped these onto four millimetre, just straight needles, because you're actually supposed to graft the shoulders together. Now I don't have a problem with that. I can make a really neat job of the grafting. But what I wanted to ask you is, do you mind having a shoulder seam on your garments? I think I'm overthinking this, right? Um, Any time before that I've knitted a garment, it's always been in pieces. There's been a back, a front, and then you do the sleeve separately. Um, but this one, you're supposed to do the body part up until the armholes, you do it all in one piece. I didn't do it all in one piece because if I had this, the front bit on as well, there's intarsia in it. You're just twisting your yarns to stop you getting a hole here up the middle. But if I was going to have the spring, the summer, the autumn, the winter all going along in a row, it would be four different balls I would have in the go at any one time. And I couldn't be bothered with that. So I split the back off and I thought, I'm just going to do the back in its own and I'll do the fronts in their own. But 
you, so I'm going to have to seam it there. I'm going to have to seam it under the arm anyway. Um, you're going to have to pick up stitches when you're going to do the sleeve and you knit them down. So you're going to have a bit of a seam there where you've picked up your stitches and you start to knit down the way in the round. Um, and I think the bit that's, um, I, I say, um, as I say, I'm overthinking this. I'm worried that if there's no seam there, does it have enough stability? Is it going to pull down at the front, pull down at the back, be pulling down at the sleeves and it's just knitting It's because you've just grafted it so it's an invisible seam. Is there enough there to give it a bit of structure? And I left this, I put it onto the needles last night, I only finished the back piece last night and I popped it onto spare four millimetre needles and as soon as I was finished the front, I thought I'll get I'll get the front pieces grafted on as soon as they're finished. Um, but then I started to think, oh, do, would I ra actually rather have a seam on there? And I don't, I really don't know. So I'm asking for a wee bit of advice. What would you do? When I finished it, I've got 14 rows in each stripe. And I've got my 14 rows in this colour over here. Um, But on this side here, I've only got 13 rows. Because if I graft it, that'll create that 14th row. I'll graft it in the cream. And I'll do the same with the front. So when I graft that to the front, it'll be going on to a coloured section. And I'll graft it with the cream. And then this, this front piece will end on a cream. So I'll graft that. I'll do one, one row short and graft it together. But I just love it. I absolutely love it. And it will fit around my tummy as well, I've checked. Um, so I really do. I just I just love it. See, when I started, I started on kind of oranges and yellows. And they weren't my favourite colours. There's always, in an advent, a 24 skin advent, there's always those colours that you're not so keen on. But um, even the ones that I'm not keen on, I was loving knitting with this. So there we go. So that's that. That's the back piece. But what would you do when it comes to the shoulders? I don't have a problem grafting. I think it's just the sheer bulk of the cardigan on me and because I've added the extra length onto it as well, I'm just worried. Does it pull too much on your sleeves? Especially if it's pulling back in front and then you're, it's pulling for the, sh the sleeve here as well. Because obviously if you were doing raglan shaping on it, you would have a wee seam, you would have a bit of stability there, wouldn't you? I'm just asking for a bit of advice. I left the yarn attached just because I wasn't sure. I was just going to cut a length of yarn with the cream enough to do the mattress stitch and I was going to cut that other ball here. But I haven't cut it yet because I thought, hmm, maybe I should just cast it off instead. So you can tell me what you think what you would do. This here is the summer colourways. And this is autumn. And this is on the back, obviously, right? So the way it's going to work is when I, when I do the front piece, it's going to be the spring will start at the bottom of this front, work its way up, and then it jumps into summer and it comes down. And then it crosses over to autumn, you come up that way, and then it goes down into the winter on the left front. And then see at the bottom at the button band, at the bottom at the rib, it'll cross over back into, it'll end in green and start in green. I'm trying to keep the colours flowing as they would in an advent calendar if you were working them. But I'm just, I really do, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And that's me, I've started on the, I've started on the front. This is the right front, so this is spring. This is the first spring colour. And it's just 14 rows each colour. And then I'll change the cream and then back to the next colour. So the front should knit up really, really quickly. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I'll very quickly show you all the colours that are in the advent. I'll try and show you them all at the one time without dropping them. So there we go. There are only two balls that are out of it. Okay, I've got that. There's one that goes in here from the, the summer colourways and that's the first colour from spring. So these two aren't in the box because they're attached to my knitting, attached to my pieces. But there we go. Isn't it lovely? That's summer and autumn in this box. That's what I use for the back. And this is um, spring and winter over here and that'll be the two front pieces. Now, it's really, uh, this is a DK weight advent calendar and I have only used about 8 grams of each mini skein so far. I've still got to do the sleeves, but there's going to be plenty of yarn and probably plenty left over as well. When it comes to doing the sleeves, because I've got, I've got spring and summer on one side of the body, I'm going to do this sleeve, that, that sleeve will be autumn, winter, and then I get a full repeat of all the colours on one side. 
And same as well, this one's winter and autumn at the back. So I'll do a spring summer sleeve. And I'm going to have to change the depth of my stripes as well. Because um, the front and back is obviously a lot longer and there's only six colours. If, so I get quite big stripes on there. But when it comes to the sleeves, um, there's going to be 12 colours and 12 cream sections as well. So I'm going to have to divide that length that I need, just divide it by 24. And so it'll be micro stripes almost, a small, lot of smaller stripes on the sleeves. So I'm really looking forward to working my way through it. It's just knitting up so quickly. I'm only getting maybe an hour or so to knit on it in an evening. And it feels like that back just flew off the needles. It just, it was, it just has, it's really, it's just knitted itself almost. But I need to be very careful I don't knock those boxes off because see if I mix up the colours I'm going to be really unhappy. The back's not so bad because I've got the sequins for those but I don't want to mix up the, the spring and the winter ones when I haven't used them yet. I hope wherever you are in the world you're getting lots and lots of time to craft or just do the things that bring you joy and maybe next time I see you I will have almost a finished garment. I hope I do have a finished garment, almost a finished garment and not another two cast on. No. Anyway, it's been nice chatting to you today and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.